searching podcasts for Dave, and one more time. And three. Number two. Yeah, might as well throw in a one. Woohoo! Uh-huh. Uh-huh. All that stuff. As the Olympics close. They do. America. Yeah. yeah. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. We, 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 we made it made it back. And uh, who are we? Hi. How you doing? I'm Dave. I'm Juan. And this is Dave and Juan. More time. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know. Just the Olympics thing just jumped into my mind because I think I think it's finishing. Yeah, I don't know. I thought I, I know it was 16 days and I keep trying to count. I said, Jesus Christ, seems like it's been on a month. I I I I've watched almost almost none. No interest. Uh does that make me a bad person? Maybe it does. I used to be really into the Olympics. I used to Dude, be if, if on the list of reasons why you're a bad person, <laughs> not watching the Olympics is that, way down. Well, I mean, I'm I know you're supposed to, you know, root for America and stuff. Sadly, I find myself not rooting for them a lot of American <laughs> teams. Individual Americans. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, the men's basketball team. Ah, no, I wouldn't. Yeah. I've never watched men's basketball. Uh, I'm not starting cause they're in the Olympics. I don't care. I don't care for Steve Kerr. Uh, I don't, you know, the coach of the basketball. I mean, I don't, yeah. So they do things. And then the women's soccer, um, who, who apparently won the gold medal. Um, oh, did so they win? I think shows you how much I know. Now yeah. I have seen a lot of clips. That's the thing. Now you can watch an awful lot of the Olympics without watching the olympics you just it's there's always something on the feed you know it, and the problem is now if you watch it you never know if it's actually live don't matter don't it care it's live the i i saw the 100 meter race uh the men's 100 meters uh where the guy seemingly i, I didn't know the rules it's like you know your, your torso has to cross none of us did yeah yeah, yeah that's uh, this guy won by five one thousandths yeah you know, it's, that's, that's, that's called the tie. That's, yeah, that's, yeah, and basically it's like the other guy's foot crossed first. And I think it's, I, I, his his foot, and I don't know if his face, but not his chest. Right. Which is, that's kind of hard to do, but that's, so apparently that's the, the rule is your torso. Yeah. Of course, define, it's all connected, torso. Well, I guess if you figure that, you know, there used to be a tape that you had to break the tape. Uh, I guess you're not I, gonna break the tape with your foot. The you? rules, you know, call me crazy. I think if it's a race, the first part of your body, yeah, like like if as long as it's attached to you, if it's if right, if that when that crosses the line, that but that's not the rule. So yeah, uh, evidently that was the you know the the second time in the Olympic track and fields that a, a man's body part played uh, a, a role in the outcome oh it was you know what one alluding to the uh the now infamous uh pole vaulter pole vaulter the french uh pole yeah, vaulter I, who, I only saw that in clips but, but we have to we, you, that was that was like a lower jump that dude wasn't even everybody's oh it cost him a goal it, may, it makes it funnier to, to make it sound like oh it cost him a medal because he got his um uh, his anatomy, certain part of his anatomy, apparently caught the bar on the way down. But uh, no, nah, he wasn't. Uh, he was. Yeah. The, what? Uh, again, don't know. Okay. Again, you know, caution. Old cranky man alert. Okay. It's it, if you win a gold medal, I I'm of the school that's that thinks twerking is not an appropriate. No. <laughs> Right. Still Wait, are you talking what... about twerking if you win it or winning it because you twerked? No, I'm talking about after they win. I saw I saw several, you know, and it's and it's 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 young women doing it. Although these days, you know, especially in these Olympics, yeah. at least know, they, they were in the women's competition, is what you're saying. Correct. Um, I, I'm not. I I am no kind of twerking expert. Uh, in fact, I was probably late to the game. People would just say twerking. I'm like, what are you talking about? But and I can I can say I don't 
believe I have been in a, shall we call it a men's club in decades. Yeah. I'm, since I'm married, I don't think. Wait, wait, wait. The last time I was in a men's club, there was no such thing as twerking. Correct. That's a new, that's a, apparently a new move that, uh, you know, they were in the labs. They were in the men's club labs over the years and developed that. Uh, but that's what that is associated with. So, you know, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear, um, you know, but there's also break dancing was a, uh, an event. Y'all, and if those, so, so that's probably not news to many of you listening, listening to the podcast. It, it was news to me. Yeah. When I, I, I think a while back, I may have heard that break dancing. First of all, how is that still a thing? The last time, look, the last time I saw break dancing was far, far longer ago than since I've been in the gentleman's club. Uh, and I think the last time I saw it was at the iron horse when some dudes just came in with like some, you know, the, the leftover cardboard from a washing machine and just threw it on the floor and started doing that thing. <laughs> no. Okay. Catch you up y'all. Uh, how, how long ago that was in the eighties, the club, the club of which he, uh, refers to is no longer in existence. Nor it's, is the building. Nor is the building. It is a, that's, Man, we are okay. We're kind of going down a different. Uh, we're, we're off the Olympics now, down the. Uh, but you know, Thibodeau's a relatively, I would think, thriving area. It, it's uh, you know, it's not it's not a ghost town by any means. No. There are a lot of nice people in Thibodeau. A lot of people have moved uh, to Thibodeau since uh, since Hurricane Ida. A lot of folks that, uh, and yet, in downtown Thibodeau, you know, it's there's a big old just a slim empty slab. Slab, slab, slab of concrete. Nice on a corner. Nice prime piece of real estate, one would think. And you know there's got to be a sewer down there. We used to pee there all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it was that was going to work without the ice, but oh. Well, that was another. That was again. We 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 mentioned that before. That's when you knew you had a really good band in town or a big weekend when there was ice in the urinals at the Iron Horse. But um, yes, yeah, so break dancing was uh, a, a sport. So I just, I don't, it's floored me, but, and I didn't see who won, didn't care, no, could, no. could not care less. But I did see, apparently, somebody from Australia, you see this, this, this woman who, I forget what she has a doctorate in, it's something stupid. And it was almost like, well, I guess it was sort of a prank or a, she somehow convinced Australia, to where she's from, to, to. Send her in breakdancing. I, I kid you Probably not. As good as anybody else. Dude, I kid you not. She did not know how to break. She, it, it, she could have been having spasms. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I don't, I, you know, I, I don't, I, I don't, I'm not going to say I could do better than she did, but not much worse. It was, it was really, really bad. If and, you practiced, and, you probably could do better. So, Again, if if you're the Olympics, I well, have it just, you know, things nothing as good as it used to be, man. We used to care about that stuff. Don't don't care about it anymore. But apparently it's it's wrapped up and and um uh, there you go. But uh New sports is weird. Way home. Yeah, sports is weird anyway. I saw this today and you know, we we've talked before like college athletics and NIL now, you know, name, image and likeness and mm -hmm. college students uh, athletes and you know what i su i suppose anybody else like wh why wouldn't somebody be sponsoring the chess teams and uh seems to me like hey uh go find the the the, the most brilliant young engineers you could pay you know pay them some nil money to slap their faces on billboard i mean anyway so that's a free idea for any university out there though i don't i am not a doctor myself so you <laughs> <laughs> You're not looking to sponsor any banking students, or anything. you will take no, no, you will not exactly. That's well, okay, hey, that, 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 but so this young lady, and I didn't catch her name here, I was pulling this up while ago. This is fascinating to me. So she is apparently the top softball uh, player, collegiate softball player in the country. She's from, uh, she played for Stanford, uh, California. Okay. She's a pitcher. 
Uh, and again, apparently she had like an under one ERA, so point whatever good, you know, and how many strikeouts and now I don't think that Stanford won the national championship. So it's not like they were in the series. I don't know if they won it, but they were, yeah, they were close. Okay. So this young lady, they'll give her, you know, give her credit. She says, well, NIL, I can transfer. Let's bid this out. And apparently um, uh, Stanford offered her something like six figures, I guess, to, to stay. She ended up getting an offer. She's going to Texas Tech. Okay. Texas Tech here. Now, first of all, Texas, what? I, I believe that's in Lubbock, right? That's in that's Lubbock. In Lubbock. It's not like it's one of the big Texas. I mean, it's. A, I'm sure it's a fine institution, but it's not. Okay, and I know I've got friends uh, who I hope don't listen to the podcast. No, but when thinking. you think of sports, you're not thinking, all right, yeah, there's a and No, but let me just point this, just the, the point here. So uh, Texas, the Texas Tech softball uh, team last year lost one point i think three million dollars they brought in about four hundred thousand and whatever they did they lost so and then this is not a this is not a slam folks most collegiate sports don't make right. money they're paid for by football practically no uh women's sports in in college make money they 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 lose or they cost the universities or whoever mm -hmm. way more than they, they bring in uh before nil Caitlin Clark may have uh, changed that for uh, maybe the Iowa female wow. basketball team may have. Okay. So this team, this, this, it, they lost, they, they cost them 1.3 million. The boosters or whoever that put the program together are paying this young lady $1 million to pitch for the uh, Red Raider. I think they are. What are yeah, they? Texas uh, Tech Red Raiders. Next year. One, it's actually one million fifty thousand and twenty four dollars. Twenty four is her number. Fifty thousand is supposedly for room and board, and a flat out million to play. One, what? Help me here. Help, help, help me. M make sense of that to me. Like what? And here's the kicker: she'd be a junior. She can go rogue again. She, she can, she can. Um, and I'm not blaming her. More power to her. Mm -hmm. But y'all, y'all. I'm going to throw out three letters that probably have something in the decision. D, E, I. You think so? They got. They probably got to pay female athletes, man. In other words, some if they're if they're paying dudes, they got to pay some women. Um, uh, I it, it it's possible. It makes you wonder what Caitlin Clark could have made if she'd have. Now she was never going to leave Iowa because that's her whatever. But just can you imagine? Can you imagine? What she'd have got paid if she'd have said, hey, uh, and she could have. She had a year of eligibility left. She could have gone anywhere. But uh, yeah, well, it was like when, what's her name, gymnastics chick from LSU, and the big announcement because she's coming back. It's like, wh wh why wouldn't she? Oh, she's coming. Who? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, she's she not actually, I was about to say, is she any good? She's pretty. I don't think so. I don't think she's so. pretty, um, and she's 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 uh, dating uh, the the awesome pitcher. Schemes, yeah. But she makes a gazillion dollars. Again. It's it's just, and I'm not I'm not hating on it. And everybody make your money. If there's a way to make your money, make, they because they got people out there making tons of money that I I don't know even know who they are. No. They tell me about oh this influencer and that influencer, and I'm huh? Is that like an actual title now? Is that it is? You, know, you could just you know, put that but on a your lot of people who go on the reality shows either aspire to be or later become. Okay. They want to get paid for, no. I guess, people. Because I did see that uh, uh, politically, I guess, started being a little bit of a stink the last week or two. These TikTok influencers or the or streamers or whatever they call it, that apparently the um, now the Harris Walls team or the Harris team was. Waltz, I don't even know. Waltz, that yeah, uh, paying money, trying to pay these influencers to endorse Right. That's and that's going on left and right. And and um, which is kind of funny because they had this one young, young man. He's a young he's a young African-American guy. And I never heard of him, didn't know who he was. And apparently he's the the top TikTok streamer. I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah, don't have TikTok. And frankly, I watched not hating on the, like, in other words, I saw mm -hmm. the guy and he's talking and 
I didn't know if it was an actor or, you know, part of me was almost curious. Like, I want to see, like, okay, what's his normal stuff look like that this guy's got millions of? Because mm -hmm. I wasn't seeing it. I was like, well, but he was complaining about being that they were, you know, the Secret Service need to stop calling me. Secret Service need to stop calling you. Um, but. Well, I'm talking about Secret Service. Did you see, I think it was yesterday in Massachusetts that, uh, I don't know who, if it was you know, Harris or her VP pick, had a rally there. Um, it must have been an area where there was businesses. And so, you know, we've talked about it before when, you know, you got you know, the way it's supposed to work. They come and check out all those places beforehand. Yeah. Uh, with this lady, I don't know, she had a salon or something and she just said, all right, I'm not going to be open on the day of this. It's too correct. Bad. I don't want to, I don't want to be dealing with all this stuff. Right. Um, so apparently some people need a place to go to the bathroom. Secret service basically taped off the security cameras, broke into her building, her place of business and let some of their people. And, and I guess some of the, the VIPs say, there you go. There's your bathroom. <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up. I think I jotted that down. There, there are lots of things that annoy me. Few things make blood shoot out of my eyes. Guys, that is, that's the world we're living in right now with, with, with certain, you know, it, it's, it's and, a different. And here's, let's go back. Uh, so I don't, I don't even know if people. You know they knew who she was. So if they needed to contact her and say, hey, can we use your bathroom? Can you come open it up for us? I'm sure they had that info. I, I, I think we're just not even glossed over that. Understand what they did, folks. They, they, and you know, they, they knew it was totally wrong. They taped the secure right. over the security cameras. Can you imagine, can you imagine? And that's your own government doing this. Like we're going to come in, break into your building while you're not there to let others use your facilities. Mm-hmm. You think they left a, you know, you left a, uh, they left a tip on the way out, or uh, they, they probably what? cranked up the AC because it was hot. Mm, well, we're living in a weird world now with the, uh, I guess AI and stuff is catching up because there's a lot of buzz out there with some of these rallies. Have you seen what's going on with the? Uh, I guess it's uh, you know if you're gonna run against Trump, it's always you know Trump's all about crowd size and you know and then they're trying to claim that that Harris is getting these, these big crowds and then others are showing, and I don't even know if it's true or not. Then in a lot of these arenas or wherever they're doing these things, a lot of the areas are closed off. Some have shown evidence. They think of AI generated fans. Okay. There's a famous one right now of like a, a, a an airport hangar or something where I guess air force two lands and the front and, and the, in the front ground is all looks like a massive crowd. But then when you look at the plane, it's people blowing up the plane. So there's a reflection on the plane pointing back and there's nobody in the reflection on the plane. So it's, you know, it's these games that, that, you know, it's momentum. Who's got the momentum? Who's got the, I don't know. I, I, I just wish we could just move the election up to tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> you done. Ain't nobody changing their minds. That's no. the, there, there's nobody sitting on a, and why don't we just move up whoever supposedly takes over? Because I listen again, I would say whatever side you're on, you can be uber conservative. You can be uber liberal. You can be independent, whatever you are. Can we all agree on one thing? None of us know who is running the right. country right now. Right. Yeah. It ain't, it ain't the dude that was on the beach again this this weekend well apparently in some interview that I had this morning he said i don't even know how old i am <laughs> i don't know if that was a joke or not but you know uh what what is not a joke is that so we're coming it's about three and a half years i think that he's been in there he has spent 40 percent of his presidency on vacation on some type of mostly in delaware and again, why do they go to Delaware all the time? Because if you go, everything around the White House is monitored. There is logs. There is official, like by law, mm -hmm. by law. Yeah, anybody log that, all the visitors and how anybody that comes and goes by law, you got to know when they go. When they go park my man over in a beach house in Delaware, open, open gate, open seat. They, anybody can come and go. You can take right, whatever cocktail on the sand, and nobody knows. Or whatever treatments you might be taking. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but 
But you know, I, I get. I, I just, I'm, I'm of the mind. Just let's just be fair about. Put it up, like, okay. Answer questions. Do, debate or not debate? I, well, I think you got to sort of have a debate, but but yeah, at least but press conferences. Trump wants one enough. I think that's stupid. Where he wants one like in a stadium or something. Where it's like that's gonna go well. I, you know, but the, the the name of the game now is just the well. I don't know what Trump. Trump's interesting. I don't. There are some things. I heard Vice President Harris had a great idea in Nevada this weekend oh, about sh- making tips tax free. Yeah, where, where have we heard that before? I, I don't. don't, uh, I, don't oh, I, I Trump with six months. I can't get my head around that. Like where where Trump famously famously it's about a month ago now, right? I mean, yeah. In a, in a, in a big rally, says, and he's been talking about that, and then she comes out and acts like it's an it's a novel idea but m- what's amazing to me are the people who are think gonna think it's it's her, a great idea her, yeah, her, wow no trump would never think of that oh well so i mean whatever but i think they said that she said well she will consider maybe doing a sort of an interview by the end of the month yeah that'd be great yeah <laughs> by the end of the month. well I, you know voting starts soon yeah. um Oh, y'all. I'm like yeah. you. I think they'll just announce it and say, hey, R- random Thursday. It's Thursday. Um, but here's what's going to be, and here's what's um interesting. And I'll give the guy credit. Whether we, well, uh, there was a time, I think, when dem- there were Democrat government governors who may have been uh, of this mind, but uh, Yunkin, right? Glenn Yunkin in mm-hmm. Virginia. And Virginia it has, they've been telling us for years, that Virginia has turned blue, you know, it's, or it, it, it wasn't a, used to be a red state, mostly, you know, conservative. Now. And a big part of that is so many people in, in uh, Virginia work for the government. Right. They just, I mean, yeah. Richmond is, or yeah, you got places in Virginia, which are right, right across so, the Potomac. So, so, uh, and I, I said this 10, 15 years ago before, I mean, uh, I don't, we didn't have a podcast and I don't know how, you know, but I used to tell people, that when you visit D.C., you realize it's a company town and everything, whether you're Republican or Democrat or independent, it's all about government making it bigger, making it more powerful. And that's why it, it just. But anyway, Yunkin, they passed the law. Uh, I guess they had to get through the legislature or whatever this past few weeks, weeks ago that there will be paper ballots. Right. And you have that. paper yeah. ballots and they must be saved for 22 months. After. So mark my words. Virginia is going to go five to seven percent red. Virginia is going to be a solid red state, and almost nobody, even the political pundits uh, on the left, are denying that. So, what does it tell you when somebody says, "Here's a state that they've they, they've been saying is oh, it's on the line. In fact, it's probably any given time can can, can go." can go blue and when, as soon as they clean up and say hey it's going to be extremely and i mean they pass some well, good laws you know, it's going to be a legit vote oh legit like yeah. everything the ballots out have to match coming in uh it, you have to match the last three uh the last, the last four numbers of the social security number with i mean like it is a legit as it should be nationwide it is a legit and now everybody says okay yeah, i take virginia off that's that's going to be tells you a little bit tells you a little bit Oh, look, my old home state for a little bit of Georgia. They are now just basically coming out and admitting, yeah, <laughs> this, was, this, was, this was shady as all get out, right? They can't find tens of thousands. Right, right. Of- we counted them where they are. Oh, look, the election's over. Ah, dang it. Bob had a, yeah. Bob had a couple boxes in his car. Yeah, well, you know what? No, we did have video all this time of somebody running the same ballots over and over yeah. and over again and miraculously getting uh and miraculously all these votes only had a vote for president on them. Right. No, nothing else. Uh that's, that's common. Well, they say in uh oh, what was I reading the other day? What state is it? It might be Georgia. It might be whatever. But they can show on the voting records right now, they've got over 2,000 names on the same address. On the same 
This is going in. Like, we know this now, and they won't. That's why they, everybody screams about, you know, we, we used to. We used to talk about, and again, I never give it a whole bunch of, and and this this podcast will probably be throttled down now because we've, <laughs> if if you are listening or watching this, congratulations, because there are certain topics where you you go down and um, let's just say the powers that be say, nah, yeah, yeah, we're gonna not have too much reach on that one, but uh, oh, what was the, oh, geez, I was just saying, this, no, but the, the whole address thing, I mean, it, it's they work, people work a system, they know the system. Um, you know, I've heard with stuff like with tax filings, you'll find people who, yeah, you know, 20 of them say they have the exact same address and they all have the exact same income, which just happens to be a dollar below the threshold that you can still qualify, uh, for whatever kind of, um, child deduction or, or where you get, uh, gotcha. you know, money back, but it's like one knows it, they all know it and they all just sit down and call it in. But luckily, we've got so many people working for the government. I'm sure we've got folks that are on that, making sure that we're not getting, you know, yeah, yeah, that our our money is being spent uh, spent properly. I never used to think about what they would. They'd always say clean up the voter rolls, and it never really in the in the past. I never, yeah, man, we got a bunch of dead people on the rolls. Who cares? Well, until you realize how many of those dead people are voting every. The thing is you you can vote um absentee well that's the thing yeah. well now they can just mail out things and and no no signature verification no nothing well y'all look and we sound like a bunch of cranks now yeah, i but... told you yeah you know, a year after my mom passed away my dad got covid money for my mom and on the check it had written deceased they just had to get had to spend the money and and people wonder why the cost of living and like why your grocery bill is 30, 35% higher than it was mm -hmm. a year or two ago. It's that's the math we don't talk about anymore about, yeah, you know, you just, you create enough money out of thin air. You didn't create extra products. Yeah. Um, it's just, it, it is what it is. Um, but Pennsylvania, which is going to be an important state. The, the governor came out a few days ago. They're already, we're, how far are we? So we're recording this on August 11th. Okay, we're going to timestamp this. This is August 11th. Three months out? He's already saying, yeah, it's going to take days to give you the results. Of yeah, and oddly, those states that are the, the you know, the battleground states always seem to be the ones that take the longest. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, Remember when Ohio was the battleground state? And then they cleaned up the voting. Yeah, always came out. Yeah, yeah they voted last. And then it came down to, uh, but that, and that's the thing about Ohio, why Ohio, they don't sweat Ohio as much anymore is because they've got pretty, uh, yeah, stout good voting rules, pretty stout voting rules. Um, so yeah, it'll be, it'll be interesting, man. I'm, I'm, um, did we talk about it last week where, uh, JD Vance got off, uh, his, his plane and, and, uh, no. <laughs> vice president Harris's plane where, on the same tarmac so he walked over i don't know if we talked about that or not no but it was we a, didn't but whether whether or not you like the guy or don't like the guy or whatever that was a baller move man that was so 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 jd vance with his little crew walked over to the reporters who was supposed yeah, to hey i'm uh heard y'all don't get to ask a lot of questions i forget i'd come over here and, yeah. i feel bad for y'all i'm hoping somebody would talk but that, that what made me kind of do a double take and i've seen other people online point it out and it looks like, remember that woman on, you know, because we forgot, they tried to kill Trump a few weeks ago. Yeah, They've already, yeah. they, they, they don't want you to remember that. You know, they shot, they literally let the man get shot. Well, one of the uh, women who were with him, the infamous, they looked like Keystone cops trying to get into the car and she couldn't get her gun in her holster and that whole, right, she began. Dude, it looks like she's on J.D. Vance's. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, travel team now. So, if, Pat if, from I, SNL. if I'm, yeah, yeah, Pat, I'll try. If I'm JD, I'm taking a look around. Um, I'm, yeah. che I'm checking some, checking some things out. But uh, so we're about halfway into this podcast now, Juan, and we didn't touch on the fact that you underwent a procedure. I, I had outpatient surgery on Thursday to repair two hernias. So to repair two hernias. 
umbilical hernia, so that's why my voice is still just as deep, if anybody's wondering, but um, I don't know the difference. <laughs> uh, but no, not bad. Um, I'm sore as all get out now. Um, uh, make, it, make me a little sore just talking about it. Yeah, it's uh, the beauty of it was not so much the procedure. Uh, was all the stuff that happened after um because we it was in the afternoon which makes it suck because you can't you know eat or drink for like forever so like the surgery was like at one and i couldn't drink past eleven thirty the night before oh wow uh, okay. so i was a little thirsty when i got there um but the high tech is great because you know when the doctor came in he made me sit up and say okay where where do you feel it so i, I, I touched where I, I felt the little bump so he took a magic marker and circled that. And so, so I, I spent a couple thousand dollars on all these tests to show where this thing was. <laughs> <laughs> You're just going with the magic marker. <laughs> no, like, yeah, all right, man, whatever you say. Well. Um, but then when so I got home, and like I said, it was outpatient surgery. So the surgery took about two hours to wake you up. And, um, yeah, Joey was all, yeah, she took off of work and I was, I said, I can catch a ride home some kind of way. You don't need to be there or whatever. You catch uh, a ride. Yeah, I said, yeah, they won't let you Uber home, though. Um, huh. but so we get home, freaking air conditioners out. No way. Hot as a beast. No way. That's that's some timing, man. You come home Dude. from surgery. Yeah. Um, so... It's like after five, lo and behold, there was an air conditioning company down the street that I would never have called before, but yeah, I wouldn't, uh, I don't know, they were okay. So Joey went down there and to see if they could send somebody to check it. So, so they did. Wait, were they working on someone else's house? They're working on a house in the neighborhood, but they couldn't come. They sent somebody else. So it was like an hour later. And so I'm laying in bed at this time. And I can hear the AC guy and Joey talking, and I couldn't really understand what they were saying, but I knew he didn't say, all right, all done. <laughs> um, so they couldn't fix the problem. Some you know, janky craftsmanship uh, caused some circuits to fry. Um, so, in your, in your, on your central unit. Yeah, yeah. The, um, you want to tell us what brand you got there, one? I don't know. No, it wasn't the unit itself. It was the wiring in the attic. Oh, like he said, you know, these wires should have been capped off when they build the house. It's something, yeah. If any of that, if anything touches that, it, you know, or moisture, it could you know, cause the circuits to break. Um, but he wasn't sure that that was would cause it. But uh, so he couldn't fix it that night. So we went to a hotel. Oh, jeez. And then I told you, know, you to get yourself a little window unit, man. I have one, but I wasn't in a position to be able to set it up. You were cured. Why they they no, circled you? No. They circled so, you with a uh, with a magic marker and and took away the boo boo. So well, um, because I asked him before the surgery, I said, "Hey, man, the the brakes on my Jeep started rubbing a couple of days ago. Can I fix that when I get home?" And he said, "Oh no, that's like six weeks." Um. How long do they want you to uh a couple of weeks where you can yeah, you know, lift anything major. Uh, really? Oh. Not, not that I you're lift gonna, anything. It's more gonna, decisions. You're gonna yeah. milk that for all it's worth, huh? No, I'm not. Uh the yeah, Joey fussed at me because I took the garbage out the other day. Uh, <laughs> said, All right, you know, that's what you're asking for. But so in our house, we have uh plantation shutters on all the windows and everything. Okay. So keep in mind, you know, it's like 97 degrees outside and you know, our air condition is not working. So when I come out of the bedroom, what does Joey have open but the plantation shutters? And I'm saying, you know, that that's letting the heat in, right? Uh -oh. oh, you think? I said, no. Sunshine. Yeah. <laughs> the sunshine was was a shining. Yeah, uh... yeah, yeah, we're looking at a pretty sunset to the west. Um, but then it's like, so she's trying to find the best deal on her phone to go to a hotel. And I'm saying... Just, just go. Just come on. Let's just go sit in the car and turn the air conditioner on and leave. You I'm take for hot. granted. Yeah, car's a good move when you got that. Yeah, yeah. You, you forget like, oh, wait a minute. Let me just sit in yeah. the car. So, but then, so I could not sleep a lick. And you ever say you didn't sleep, but you know you really slept some. Yeah. I did not sleep all night long. Come on. 
And I'm sitting there thinking, Jesus Christ, I'm on pain medicine. Uh, you know, just I'm still got anesthesia in my system. How could I not be falling asleep from this crap? And this was in a hotel room? In a hotel room that was freezing because I had that thing cranking. <laughs> uh, so it was like, you know, I knew if I, yeah, with time I could take pain medicine again. So at that time I, I took more. Uh, still didn't sleep. So when I, I had to call the next morning and schedule like a follow up appointment and so i left the message for the nurse and said I, I i don't know what's going on but i am not sleeping at all so a little later that afternoon i yeah i'm waiting for her to call back take pain medicine again and when she finally calls back I said, yeah every now and then that pain medicine we prescribe for you causes people to not be able to sleep thanks so go ahead and take some tylenol i said yeah because that's the same thing <laughs> Yeah, I'm sitting here hurting, and you give me. How about if I bring this other medicine back, and you give me something? Yeah, that'll work. But now, so I didn't sleep for 24, 36 hours. Really? After surgery. Yeah, it was a your brain month. started like messing. We should have done a podcast then, man. And you start getting delusional. It was. It was weird because again, like I just wasn't in a mindset to get on my phone laying in bed. Um. So you're sitting there, and it's like, what do you do? So I start thinking, and I'm realized. I guess it was like the still fog brain from uh, the anesthesia, because I'm going through stuff, and it's like, oh, what's that dude's name at work? And I couldn't think of his name. And then I start going around like everybody's offices and stuff. And I said, like, I don't remember that name either. Uh, so, but yeah, that that was you know my good time with no sleep. But uh, thankfully, so I'm sure when it's all, all done, Joy's very concerned with you. She's been waiting on your hand and foot for the she past has, few days. Right up until about, you know, four or five hours, uh, you know, after we got, now she, she went to work the next day and then I slept Friday night. So before I woke up, she okay. got up and left and, and went out of town for the weekend to, uh, to go to a concert in Houston. So you healed enough. Uh, healed You're enough. Healed and, enough. Time to but then was worried about me this morning because I wasn't responding to her text because I was asleep. So she called me and woke me to make sure I was okay because she was just frantic. <laughs> so thank you. Appreciate that. You were that worried, honey. She what concert was. you went to? Luke Combs. Luke Combs. Who sang the song with uh, Tracy Chapman. He sang the Tracy Chapman. Oh, is that? Again, I... I... I'm not big country, but... um. Yeah, it was at the NRG. Um, That's it's the cool. big one. I mean, they've been to a couple concerts there. Her and Riley have been. And she, Joey's got a friend from high school that lives right there. Um, and they basically take them down to the whatever the is whatever the train system is in Houston. That, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So drops them off there and picks them up after, and so it's it's yeah. pretty easy deal for them. The uh, train system in Houston's pretty uh pretty useless, but yeah, it's yeah, uh. It gets, I don't think it, best I can tell, I've never been on it. Um, the best I can tell, you're not going to, you're probably not going to run into too many crack addicts and homeless and whatever on the the Houston trains. Just now when you get off, you are. Yeah. That's not, that, that, <laughs> for some reason, point. for some reason, the, uh, the stops are where. Um, well, I think they got off. There was a stop in maybe in the Marriott or some hotel or something, and that's where they go and he picks them up there. But um, mm. I don't know. But she said it was the last stop of the tour, and apparently he's got some song in it that talks about shotgun and a beer, and had a bunch of the Texans players on stage with him. The Texans played yesterday afternoon, I think, or Friday. Yeah, uh, I think so. So they were up there, shotgun and beers with him on the stage. Well, that's a, that's a promising, uh, <laughs> good, good move. And see, yeah. that's promising. I, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, a, I mean, I'm not hating on the new country. I don't, don't get yeah, it. I, I, like when they talked about it a couple of months ago, said, you want to go? I said, no, but I'm of the mind now. And it's funny, this, this topic, I was, uh, this last few weeks, just, you know, going, going walks and stuff and just music and, you know, making playlists or whatever. And I am I'm of the mind now that rock, rock, especially pop rock, peaked in the eighties and country peaked in the nineties. I was little, I mean, I've been on a on a nineties country kick with uh now George Strait goes back a little beyond that, but George yeah. Strait, Randy Travis, some forgotten ones, man. Clint Black, 
Clint yeah. Black had some good stuff. Uh, uh, that's, I think I said Randy Travis. Uh, and I'm sorry, under freaking rated. I know you're a favorite. Sawyer Brown. Uh, yeah, I like Sawyer Brown. Sawyer Brown's got, you know, they got seven or eight solid, maybe more, but, um, and, and I owe an apology uh, to the Dixie Chicks. Their just songs. The chicks now. They're just the chicks. Well, I'm there, they're the Dixie Chicks. They, they can call themselves whatever, but they, when they put out these songs, and I was one of these guys, I liked them. They were, they're, they're, they're a band too that you hear some of their stuff now. Like, why? Now, we, we know why they disappeared because they. Right. They got, uh, yeah. Before okay, country totally worse. went woke because now there's nothing I don't think the Dixie Chicks did that's any worse than, say, Garth Brooks has done. I mean, you know, they're all. Who knew the country, these big, these country stars were becoming super liberal. That was, yeah. you, know, you would, but on the flip side is at least some in country or, or not. I'm going to guess like this Luke guy. Um, what's his name? Combs. Luke Combs. Well, who's the other one that everybody makes fun of? Is it Luke Bryan? Is that Luke a, Bryan is the guy that's on American Idol. I don't think he's liberal, but he's no, 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 no. Luke, not, no. American Idol is, uh, that's Luke Bryan on there. Is it? I thought it yeah. was, uh, Mm -mm. Lionel Richie, Luke Bryan. Okay, Luke Bryan. Well, who's who's the guy that married um, Gwen Stefani? Oh, that's uh, um, he's on The Voice, or he was on The Voice. Um, I don't know these shows, man. <laughs> yeah, he's got some clubs in in Nashville. I forgot his name. People uh, are yelling it at us right now. All right, well, let me clean. Hey Siri, uh, who's the uh, male? Singer dude on what is it? Uh, the voice. The voice. Male singers. Uh, she has no idea what I just said. Married to you know, Gwen Stefani. It's Gwen Stefani husband. You know what I'm gonna do? I pay money for this. Watch this, man. I, I'm I'm using Chat GPT for everything now. Who's married to Gwen Stefani? Uh, Blake, Blake Shelton. Shelton. God darn it! There you go. Psych. They got married on July third, twenty twenty one, after dating for several years. Right. Blake Shelton is a country music singer and television personality, best known for being a coach on the TV show The Voice. Thank right. you, Chat GPT. Right, yeah. Anyway, so I use George instead of Chat GPT. Okay. No, it's called it's Claude. <laughs> George Claude. <laughs> My son told me it was better. So. Whatever, I use uh, but uh. So all right, so you talking about old eighties and nineties stuff and entertainment? So yesterday, because you know I was home recovering from surgery alone, uh, and there ain't Jack on TV, um, other than preseason football. Uh, I said, let me see what I had in movie I had never watched. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of. Them. I watched The Godfather for the first time. You, that's almost hard to believe. Yeah. It, it, I would think that if you're watching it, you must almost know where it's going. I don't know. It wasn't that good, though. Oh, come on. It was all right. Oh, I got to disagree with you on that, man. I mean, I, mean, I, I liked it. I, I spent, I watched straight through for you know, three and a half hours. I watched it on a plane the other day. Again, I probably see, I mean, I probably see the original it, one. Yeah, 15, 20 times. Um, yeah. Well, there you go. You got so. All right. In honor of that, I'll, I'll have to go watch something I've never, I've never, what, what we. Well, I can tell you what not to watch. I started watching after that, like a Mission Impossible movie. I think it's the maybe the most recent one, a Recon or something like that. I think I've seen one or two of those. I didn't. I, it was like two and a half hours. I invested an hour and a half and I said, I'm done. I can't believe I saw a list the other day of the top, top grossing movies of all time and, and, and that Avatar is still number one. I've never watched it. I've never seen Avatar. No. no. <laughs> that could be on my house and I'd walk in the other room and nothing right. against the movie. It's just, I'm just, oh, not I, I have a lot against stuff. the movie. I think I just, well, it's, it's a big long list, right? I've never seen avatar. I've never watched ET. I've never watched Titanic. Nope. Nope. Uh, nope. that's what I'm just long, you know, it, and, and now it's like, a, it's a, um, you know, it's smoking the bandits. Several times. <laughs> oh, I've watched smoking every Dude, if Smoking the Bandit was playing on the screen right here, you'd be doing this by yourself. I, <laughs> I will watch Smoking the Bandit every time it's on there. Hey, um, just, just jumping around a few, few more minutes. We, I meant to talk about this a few weeks ago, and then 
I didn't because I figured, oh, it must not be a story anymore. It must have been solved. But then I just saw a little while ago that it's not. Um, we got two astronauts stuck in space right now. Yes. <laughs> well, weren't they supposed to be back like this week? And I said, ah, probably next year sometime. It's, it's a while now they're supposed to be. But um, from uh, Boeing. Boy, the Boeing yeah. company. Yeah, uh, Brenda Boeing. Ooh, man. <laughs> they, they can stand a little bad press. The Boeing company is just not, you know, the, the, the com one of the companies that likes to advertise what their priorities are and nowhere on their priority list are apparently producing good products or people that know what they're doing. But, and then the story on this is, so whatever their Boeing, blah, blah, blah. That, and I didn't even know that Boeing put people in space. No, yeah, I was surprised. I thought they were just airplanes, but apparently they do this other stuff. But um, before they launched, they knew there was a slight helium leak or something. So they knew before that there's a... <laughs> but the geniuses and the powers that be at Boeing said, shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, you know, they, they they have that same management philosophy as the Trump security team uh, yeah. in Pennsylvania. What? The guy there has got a gun. What? Yeah. yeah he might what be bad? an issue. Yeah, what bad, what bad can happen? So they they uh, they put this uh, thing up in space, uh, although people, a lot of some people say that we've actually never been to space because it's not outer space. It's it's Earth orbit, but it's 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 far enough away. You can't just go get them. Right, right. They you need. Home. You need rockets to go get them. And now they apparently can't. Um, Why can't and, they? We don't have a rocket to go get them? Or? Well, they don't. It's, it's, it, that's the thing. And so there's, there's talk that maybe Elon Musk, uh, his SpaceX, you know, he puts, they, they do launches all the, but they're not going anywhere till February. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. So, and I'm, I'm no rocket scientist or rocket builder. Neither is Boeing. But well, maybe, <laughs> apparently, but I'm going to go ahead and guess. It's not something you say, ah, dang it. We're out of rockets. Somebody slap one together. Can we have it by Thursday? You know, it's bad. I was reading something a while ago. You know, it's bad when NASA, who is, you know, it's, it's a typical, it's a government agency and whatever. I mean, NASA is just down the road from here. It's, it's what are you, even NASA is, is, uh, slamming, complaining about the, the, the Boeing situation now, but, uh, I got a feeling those two astronauts, I bet they didn't get a vote on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I got a feeling they're going to own some of them. Yeah. Hey, hey, bro. There's a chance. Got a little helium leak. It's not, it's not a real big, big chance, but it's a chance. Good. <laughs> I'd, I'd have more faith on some Cajun, some, some Cajun jackleg mechanic explaining to me. Man, yeah. bro, look, let me tell you what this is. That helium. They use that for like the microwave. Don't worry. Yeah. It, it, if you lose that, it's not going to be bad, man. You might have to eat, you know, you might have to eat some cold sandwiches, but you're going to be okay. We, we put some on a good tape in, in that cave. Yeah, you don't want to be like, yeah, uh, you might get up there and just cause cascade, cascading problems and you can't, you can't get out. But um, well, do they have supplies? I hope so. I mean, you know, I. I don't know what their contingencies are. You know, what's the contingency for, uh, for um, you, you might be up there four months longer than we planned. Hey, guy missed, not, he might miss a good bet on like the Super Bowl champion or something. Do not know. Do not know. I somehow also got uh, recently, um, you know, the, the um, algorithms, right? You start watching something and then. I think both on, well, they're the same thing. Facebook and Instagram is the same thing. So mm -hmm. I'll, I'll get the, uh, and uh, I, I clicked on a few and I'm, 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 I'm getting all the stuff in New Orleans, the tourist stuff in New Orleans and uh, all the cage. There are a lot of Cajun uh, personalities, I guess, that I just, right. Some of them play, you know, well, no, DJ Red, he's good. Yeah. DJ Red's fine. Some of the, some of the stuff's really good. Uh, it's hard to put out as much. But there's some, some comedian, look, my sister and some of her her husband and some of their friends went see a Cajun, a Cajun comedian at Freeman's in Thibodeau a couple weeks ago. Apparently in the upstairs part, they got a little stage up there. Really? Do you remember the name? It was great. Cajun. Mm -hmm. 
You don't know who it was? I don't I don't know who he was. Well, so you know they got a couple of ladies that do um they talk, you know, they they they're pretty authentic. I don't know the ones uh, uh Yeah, I been, follow a couple of those. Yeah, you know, DJ, they got that steel cracker guy. He's a bit much. He's hard to take sometimes. But I get it. I, I, I see how the youngins like that guy. And then uh, there's one guy that just just talks French. Young guy talks Cajun French, and they have the captions. He's always telling jokes and stuff. But yeah, I'm, I'm on I'm on that algorithm. So I'm I'm discovering all of them. Yeah, and apparently they all once you're on. And apparently, besides maybe DJ Rhett, they all have spices to sell. They all have, <laughs> they all. They all, you know, there's one plant somewhere back of Lafayette or New Iberia that they just all, you, you know, they just, they got different labels they slap it on stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Koyai, this is where I put on my, my, you know, slap your mama. Oh, that's actually yeah, a, that's a, on my, a on my red beans and rice right here. Never complete. Yep. Um, yeah, but, but the, oh, the other guy that I see now and then, and, I, I, and it's, it's clips, he, I guess he's doing a better job of marketing himself. Is the uh, young man that does uh, Louisiana Dread? You, he's um, what's his name? Oh darn it! He does. He just he does stories of all. He talks about all the little, the southern uh, Louisiana towns. Uh, oh, I have. Yeah, 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 yeah. He yeah, did one on Cutoff. Huh? He did one on Cutoff. Oh, he's done them all. He's he's done. I mean, like, I mean, he, I was watching the Valentine. Of course, you know Valentine is actually Valentine. Was named and it was a family out of Napoleonville. All right. Wealthy person in Napoleonville, and his daughter was born on Valentine Day, like 1850 or something. They called her Valentine. Valentine. And then she lived, she grew up in Napoleonville, and then she ended up marrying, a, I think, a Barrios. Had, they had land just south of Raceland or Lockport, whatever it is, and it was Valentine Plantation. But All it's, right. um, yeah, man, cut off the story of cut off. We always had the wrong one. I uh, all the everybody had made up a story by cut off, but apparently it was a they started a bayou. They were gonna have a cut off between that area, you know, where cut off is and uh New Orleans, but the Intracoastal Canal ended up being the one, you know, what, what got used. So it was never uh, anyway. Cut off. Galliana. Yeah, the the one that I saw, if it's the same guy, he seemed to be impressed with the fact that cut off wasn't as much of a dinky place that he thought it would be. Might have okay. was that him? Yeah, he's a young I guy. I'll see what's his name. I'm gonna look it up. And see they, well, it's called Louisiana Dread, is the um, like D R E, I guess. All right, yeah, I don't know what um, I'll yeah, I, I don't even know why it's called that, frankly, because yeah. it's, it's a unique enough name, but um, but that's all I need. I've been watching, like I've said, my accent, you know, we do these, these, these speaking things, you know, lately, and and uh. Uh, yeah, I've had more and more people say, where are you from? And so that means, oh, Lord, I'm getting ticker and ticker when I talk. <laughs> and watching all these, watching all these clips, do, you know, doesn't help. Right. Bringing you home, man. Bringing you home. Do, doesn't. Uh, right. You tell them, say, I'm, from, I'm from, just down the buyer from Valentine. Valentine, Valentine. Yeah, man. He did Golden Meta. He did, I think he did Fouchon. Oh, you got to do the Fouchon. Learning about the Côte Blanche bridge, uh, not the bridge, the Côte Blanche. Uh, yeah, all, all good, all good stuff. Um, what any what other major things happened since we've been on? Oh, the stock market. Apparently, that's you know, I, I'm amazed by the stock market attention though, because for a while, until people started claiming that the the current president was influencing the stock market, it was the president has no influence over the stock market. Then when things, you know, and even if he did, that's not a middle class issue because only you know rich white people care about the stock market. Uh, but then when the, you know, when it was good, he was the president had you know interest in it and it was good for all people. Then when it tanked, it was ah, the president got nothing to do with that. Nothing to do with that. Nothing to do. And and uh, and my only thing, my only note on that, folks, is uh, whenever that because my wife. I don't know if she heard before me, woke up in the morning and some of the stock market and she would, you know, my wife just says, Oh, great. And I'm just, <laughs> I'm saying, what is it? How is that hitting us right now? But don't look, don't, don't. Yeah. No, I don't look at that. I, got a 401k, like, don't look. Sunday night, a friend of mine, like a Facebook friend who I haven't seen in you know, maybe one time in decades, who I wouldn't necessarily put, you know, a, a lot of 
credence in her opinion if that's what i'm doing uh, if i'm using that correctly but you know posted something like oh god tomorrow's gonna be a terrible day the japanese stock market is crashing and i said oh wow Man, she don't know what she's talking about no i don't think anybody does that that's the the, the problem as well uh and i have friends who that's that's their sort of their world what mm -hmm. they do and with all due respect nobody knows what's going on no. no, 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 nobody. Because it's it's not even the, the world. It's not, it's not like, oh, that's a great company. Buy that company. Well, just because it's a great company doesn't mean its stock is not overpriced. Mm -hmm. Right? You can say, you know, man, I really I, I really like that coffee pot. That's a great coffee pot. It's right. going to last a long time. The only, the only Thousand dollars. You know? yeah. The only person who really you know, has legit insight into the stock market is Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> So other than that, you can just take it for with a grain of salt. I shared I shared that meme with uh, or that meme, but that somebody had a tweet out there on when the day it crashed and basically said, "I just want to know what Nancy's buying today." <laughs> That's that'll 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 get us uh get get us out of here. But yeah. Uh, so yeah, for those of you that um, those of you that hear stuff like that and and oh man, the stock market's crashing or doing whatever or. These indexes that you never paid attention to before, I have no idea what they mean. They're down, they're this, they're that. Here's, here's a comforting thought for you. Nobody knows. Right. They don't Nobody know. knows. Don't look they, at it. They, they don't know. And you know the people that know the least are the people that are on TV trying to convince <laughs> you what's going to happen. Because most of the people you see talking are salespeople. They're, they're, they're going to promote what, whatever their holdings are. Promoting their knowledge. And every time something goes wrong, when it's a miss, they were just early. You know, they're not wrong. They're just early uh, on the. Uh, on their timing, bro. I'm so smart. I just, I was, I, I was out thinking everybody else. I, I know, I know I lost a lot of money there, but I was really right. I was just, uh, I was right a little too early. <laughs> You know, it's part of part of the problem is I'm just too on top of things. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's just rough when you're too good. It's um, and the same people that you, that, you know, you, you look at and they're wrong so often. But we just forget like, oh, just like nah, it's, you know, politics, political, it's, you know, folks, it's mm -hmm. the people that tell us what's going to happen. And uh, same thing right now with the polls, guys, you get ready for it. All the don't believe a single don't believe a single poll you see. Good, bad, indifferent. It's all made up. Um, I love when they take, oh, you know, Harris is up, Trump is up, down, up, up, down, whatever. And then you look at who the samplings. Like, no, 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 wait a minute. How 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 can you tell me that's an accurate poll if you are Well, remember, remember what President Biden stressed before he pulled out. <laughs> wait, what that polls aren't accurate. Polls aren't accurate. Polls aren't accurate. Come on, man. You Come know on. that. Come on, man. I did see, I did read something right here. Um, despite being replaced by Harris, Biden vows to campaign wherever she wants him. Yeah. <laughs> on the beach. <laughs> well, but it also goes back to the question of, then why you dropped out, Joe? Yeah. Well, her vice president or her running mate, said that he was sharp as a tack when he made the decision when he, he made the sharp as a tack and everything leading up to it this dude was on his game we didn't talk about that guy and we got we we're gonna be punching out here we'll come we'll come back to that guy to the oh that's true ever since we have been on uh uh harris yeah. has chosen Tim, is it Tim Walls? Walls? Tim Walsh or Walls? Walls, or Walsh? Walls. The uh, governor of uh, of Minnesota. The great state of Minnesota. And uh, his wife apparently opened the window to get a scent of history as yeah, Minnesota was, in, was burning during the enjoyed riots. Enjoyed smelling the burning uh, tires um, yeah. when, when Minneapolis was, uh, was up in smoke. And um, what was the other? Oh, and then we'll thank you for your service. Let's yeah. just leave it. At that. <laughs> Let's just leave it. Uh, we'll just we'll just leave it at that. There seems to be a question. Timing. That this guy's going to make John Kerry look like Patton by the yeah. time it's over. But <laughs> we'll uh, we'll get back to that another time because one of us still has to go to church and and birthday celebration dinner. 
Uh, sort of. That was yesterday, but yeah, I'm gonna ke- 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 catching up on that. Yeah, one, one more. I'm actually not a year older, y'all. I'm a week older from the last time I saw y'all. Just happened to cross over that that birthday. The calendar. Yeah, we just happened to flip that cal that that, uh, that calendar. But uh, yeah, gonna go have me a birthday plus one day uh, dinner with uh, with some family. But uh, we'll push the button. Get on out of here. See if any of this stuff stuck to tape. Y'all, if you want to reach us, not that hard to find. It's Dave and Juan at ProtonMail.com. And yeah, here. Here. Wherever you are. If we're coming into your earbuds, if we're, if, we're, if we're just wafting over the kitchen as you listen to this, if you're in your car, wherever you're listening to, you found us yeah, next Siri, week. Siri, right after she tells you who is married to uh, Gwen Stefani. Right. She yes. can tell you where to find us. You can tell you can tell you where, where to find us, and unless uh, unless one has another vacation or surgery to do in the next uh, couple of weeks, I think we we are pretty That's sure. Right. I don't think I got anything coming up next week. We'll see, but uh, we should be back next week. Yeah, I'll be I'll be here, man. Kind of funny. We've done three years of these. Probably missed two weeks, maybe three, yeah, and then in the entire three years. But once you miss one, you're like, I don't know. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It was a good week. Once that streak is broken, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, y'all, every week we tell you it's not a hint, suggestion, subtle implication. We are not, you know, no. we're not just giving you a wink and a nod. It's a Mm-mm. freaking. No, it's a freaking mandate. Freaking bro. mandate. Go live your best life. Go live your best life. Wherever you are right now listening to us, look around. Am I living my best life? If you're not. Now, if you look. Li- now, if, you, if, if, if you're using the bathroom while you're listening to us. I don't know. Hope it's a good one. You know, maybe, you know, it, it, it's uh, whatever. Oh, look, man, no judgment here. No judgment. Uh, it might be a good day. Might be a rough day. Good week, rough week, what, whatever. Take it as it comes. Keep your head up. Don't twerk. Just don't twerk. <laughs> Especially not while you're using the bathroom. Right. There you go. Visual, I didn't need to close the show, but glad you uh, you got it to us. Anyway, but if you got some cardboard laying around and you want to break dance. Right. Apparently, you don't need to be very good to be in the Olympics. So, everybody, you got something to shoot for. Got something to shoot for. But, uh, okay, until then, everybody, have a fantastic week. Hope you do, too, bud. Love you. Back at you, dude. So, I don't know if you've ever had a medical procedure in recent history, but they they make you wear this little gown. Uh, You can keep your socks on. That's the only thing you can keep on. Um, I don't know why. They say people For your dignity. Yeah. (laughs) So, but then... Yeah, you may as well be naked. Um, so after, you know, I'm, I'm waking up in recovery. And I'm still groggy. And they got to put this thing on me. Which, you know, it's like a freaking girdle, basically. Okay. Yeah, it's like close to five feet long. You know, I'm, I'm big around, but I'm not that big around. So it takes some maneuvering to do. So I'm now in the open area. You know, I got this little gown on. Well, they got to lift it up to you know, <laughs> put the thing on me. So I'm shimmying all around. Uh, I'm still groggy from uh, the anesthesia. But I thought to say, how about that tan? <laughs> said, pretty impressive. <laughs> how about that tan? Yeah, I said, look, just got back from Costa Rica. I'm pretty dark, huh? <laughs> No, not it was probably not where they were wrapping. <laughs> no, nah, they wrap you like between the okay. you know, the hips and the ribs. <laughs> no. But I will tell you, I'm keeping that thing because yeah, you know, it made me look pretty good in a t-shirt when I was wearing it. Yeah, look pretty buff. <laughs> Different version of Spanx. <laughs> it's over. Go home. <laughs>